there is ihsan in ambitions and goals. Allah said on the earth, He laid out for the creatures, for the creations. No way can we attain ihsan at, at our potential level unless and until we be proactive to earn the riches of this world. We cannot attain ihsan at our potential level until and unless we be proactive and productive to attain the riches of the world which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left for the Muslims and left for you. We cannot attain ihsan at the level of our potential, at the level of your potential. You cannot attain it. Until unless you be what? Proactive and productive to attain the riches of the world which is left for who? For the Muslims and Muslima. And for you, and for you specifically. There is, there is a, there is a vast amount of wealth, luxuries and comfort for us as Muslims to attain in this world, worldly life. Allah has left that comfort only for the Muslims. Past, present and future. Spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, mentally, physically, materialistically, every angle. Obviously you're a Muslim so you're within that. So there's a potential you have for you to attain the highest as a human first and then as a Muslim. If you are not a Muslim, you cannot attain that level. But because you're a human and then you're a Muslim, within the Ummah you're going to attain that highest level. And then, and then as an Ummah you're going to attain the highest level. And then you as an individual Muslim, you're going to attain the highest level within the Ummah. So I'll give you an example to understand. The Sahaba at the end of their life, as, as a Muslim Ummah, they were the what? They were the what? Hmm? Huh? The richest. I'm talking in my context, brothers, right? I'm talking, I'm in one context and you're saying another context. They were the what? The richest. richest. As a ummah, they were the richest. As individuals also, they were the what? I, if they were normal human beings, would they, could they have reached that richness? Could they have reached that richness? No. So first, they attain that richness as what? As an ummah, as Muslim. And then individually, they attain that position of authority and, riches, and richness. Is that clear? So last time, at the end of his life, what was he? Rich. How rich? Rookie. How rich? Num numbers. How rich was he? Huh? Come on, brother. Huh? Infinite. Trillion, he was a trillionaire. At the end of his life, he was a trillionaire. How many lands was he, did he own? Obviously, he gave it away. But how many lands did he own? No. Huh? Whole of Arabia. Whole of Arabia. That was his, it was his. A portion of the booty comes to who? Comes to who directly? Who? So all of that booty went to who? So I said, went to him. It was personal. It was personal. His wealth. What did he do with it? He gave away. He had valleys of what? Sheep and goats and camels and valleys. What did he do with it? A, 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 one Arab came and said, Muhammad, I want, I want what? What did, what did he say? He said, I want this, I want that. Last time said, go to that valley, valley, between two mountains. Take all the sheep and goats from there. All the sheep and what? That's one individual. How many individuals are coming to him? How many are coming to him? Hundreds. Okay? When he slaughtered, on, 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 on his, on his hajj, when he slaughtered for his family, how many did he slaughter? Huh? Camels, he slaughtered 60 plus camels for his family only. Then he slaughtered for Ummah. Huh? And then he, then he got tired, he gave it to who? Ali and Zubair to slaughter. 
Whose camels were they? His camels. One camel today is how much? How much? Yeah. How many horses did he, did he have? And go. This is just, this is animals. Forget the lands. Is that clear? So he was literally a trillionaire. But obviously he gave them a way to who? To the Ummah. He gave them a way to the Ummah. Sahaba, same. They were all trillionaires. Billionaires, if not billionaires. But yeah, they used to get, time of Abu Bakr and Umar, he used to send what? In a bag, he used to send what? Gold coins. How many? Minimum thousand gold coins was given to the Sahaba. Minimum thousand gold coins. Imagine yourself with thousand gold coins. Real gold coins, thousand. What would they do? The Sahaba, what would they do? <laughs> they gave it away. And Umar ibn Khattab is to send someone just to check what they do. And is to come back and report to him. He used to say, what did they do with the, with the, with the dinar? He said, oh, they, they gave it away. No, they did not keep one gold coin. <clears throat> they gave it away. Okay? Time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. The Muslim Ummah had no one to be given to what? Zakat too. There was no one in the whole Muslim empire for there to be given zakat to. That's literally looking at the whole of you, the whole Muslim ummah, ummah like whole of what? Whole of UK. I everyone's the way they were off in UK like that, but more. But even the UK people didn't zakat. But there was a time in Umar Abdul Aziz's time that no one needed what? Zakat. And this took place in many, many cities, many, many villages, and no one was in need of zakat. And we remain the most powerful ummah and the most prosperous, well-off, wealthiest ummah for more than a thousand years. For more than a thousand years. Even India was part of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu and it alone India alone leave the rest of the Ummah alone just India in of itself when the, when, when, when the British went in terms of GDP it was the richest country in the world now if you include the Ummah <laughs> <clears throat> Obviously, what made uh, the British take over India it was the, it was the Industrial Revolution. It was the technology. So it's important for us to embed these mindsets within ourselves, within our families, within our children. 